Welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items for you. Attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the, attend the panelists will not be able to see or hear you during their presentations. And there is one additional block of presentations this evening, so please feel free to sign up for them at the same website where you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist this evening, which will be Marshall University. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak and present to you all today. Um, as I, it was just said, my name is Matthew Groves, and I am a recruitment coordinator for Marshall University. Um, a little bit about myself before I get started going more in depth with Marshall. Um, I graduated from Marshall back in December of 2018 with a bachelor's degree in journalism and then a minor in English and a minor in film studies as well. I absolutely loved my time as a Marshall student and I hope that you will enjoy your time as a future Marshall student as well. Um, so, Without further ado, a few things to talk about on becoming a son or daughter of Marshall. So Marshall's academic programs, we have over 90 different degree programs, and they are broken up into a variety of different colleges. We have our College of Arts and Media. We have our Lewis College of Business. We have our College of Education and Professional Development, our College of Health Professions, our College of Engineering and Computer Sciences, our College of Liberal Arts, our College of Science, and then our University College for undecided majors. With every single one of these colleges, we will still partner you up with an academic advisor who will be there to give you assistance on scheduling classes and giving you career advice in trying to figure out what exactly it is you want to go into. Um, to apply to Marshall, it's a relatively easy process. We require a completed application, a $40 application fee, a copy of your high school transcript, a copy of your ACT or SAT scores, we do accept both, um, and a copy of your immunization records, including your MMR vaccination. For transfer students, in addition to those things, we need a copy of your college transcripts, and also there's a $50 transfer evaluation fee. So Marshall's admissions requirements fluctuate depending on what your GPA is combined with your test score. So for students who have at least a 2.0 GPA, we require a 19 composite on the ACT or a 990 on the SAT. Or for students who have a 3.0 GPA, we require 16 on the ACT or an 880 on the SAT. A few majors with special requirements are music, nursing, our bachelor's of science in nursing and our associate's degree in nursing, our medical imaging program, our college of engineering and computer sciences, and our college of science. If you would like to know the special requirements, please feel free to message me and I would be happy to tell you about those. So these right here are merit-based scholarships. With these merit-based scholarships, they are solely based on your merit and your merit alone. They are not competitive in any way, shape, or form. By meeting the qualifications for them, you are awarded this money and these amounts are renewable for up to four years. We offer two different types of tuition, two different rates of tuition, excuse me, um, for students in Ohio. Um, we offer metro tuition and then non-residential tuition for anybody who is not considered a metro student. Um, to be considered a metro student, you would need to live in the Ohio counties of either Gallia, Jackson, Lawrence, Meigs, Pike, or Scioto. If you live outside of any of those, you'd be considered a non-resident. So all of the merit-based scholarships would be in that column for you. And then if you're in one of those counties, you would qualify for the Metro scholarships listed there. 
If you ever have any questions about anything at all, please feel free to message me, um, send me an email, give me a call. Um, as I'm sure all of these other representatives can attest to, we're, there is not a whole lot of traveling going on right now across the world. Um, so I am in my office a lot of the time. Feel free to give me a call or send me an email whenever you have a chance. And I also invite you to check out marshall.edu slash experience, where you are able to sign up for an in-person tour of campus, a virtual tour of campus, or you can explore our virtual green and white day open house, which will give you an in-depth look at campus, a virtual tour, our dining facilities, and our residential facilities as well. Um, I absolutely loved my time at Marshall as a student, and I equally love my time at Marshall as an employee. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to present to you all. And again, if you ever have any questions about anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. And I would be happy to absolutely talk your ear off about Marshall University. Um, thank you all very much. And I will be here throughout the remainder of the presentation um, to answer any additional questions that you all might have. Thank you very much, Marshall. Uh, up next this evening is West Liberty University. Awesome, thank you all so much. My name is Aaron Kuhn and I'm one of two admission counselors responsible for recruitment in Ohio for West Liberty University. Uh, depending on where you live in the state, you might be familiar with Joe Wakeham, my colleague. He recruits Columbus and above, and then I basically have surrounding Columbus and below. Um, I work with all of our out-of-state students as well. So I'm going to start out with a quick video. It's 30 seconds, but I think it does the best job of showing you who we are uh, and what we do here at West Lib. There's a place where family and tradition are forged in the West Virginia Hills, strengthened by the inspiration of a world-class education, where hands-on learning is encouraged and applied. A community where you will be supported and be inspired to support others, an experience that is more than just a university, it's a place you'll call home, a legacy you'll leave for generations to come. It's all here at West Liberty University. Okay, so I hope that you could both see and hear that. I know Zoom can be a little um, touchy, but I'm West Liberty alum. And two things I always like to point out from that video that are absolutely true. Uh, the first is where hands-on learning is encouraged and applied. I think that statement more so than anything else describes what we're all about at West Lib. If you're an education student, we put you in the classroom your freshman year. If you're a science student, you have the opportunity to do research alongside faculty freshman year. The second point is that it's all here at West Liberty University. Um, you'll find on the next slide that we are a relatively small school, but no matter what you want out of your college or university experience, you can do at West Lib, but in a more intimate setting. So by the end of your first semester, students, faculty, and staff campus-wide are probably going to be on a first-name basis with you. Here's a quick look at some fast facts about the university. So again, we're relatively small. We have around 2,500 students, an average class size of 25, and a student faculty ratio of 15-1. So I always like to say that West Lib is a public institution, almost disguised as a private institution. So you get that personalized attention that you want, but you get it at an affordable state rate. Um, we are one of the top 100 most affordable universities in the United States. I believe we're in the top 50 of that ranking. So 90% of students at West Lib receive some type of financial aid, and we award $6 million every single year in scholarships, which is significant considering we're a relatively small school. Uh, we do have over 70 majors of study to choose from. So Again, we are kind of the best of both worlds where it's a small institution, um, but we have every opportunity you could imagine. So majors in arts and media, business, education and human performance, liberal arts, 
and then the sciences. And the sciences um, are what we're really known for, both health sciences and biological sciences. Our most unique major is zoo science and applied conservation. Uh, so to give you an idea of the practicum I mentioned when I started, we have over 300 animals living on our campus. We're about 10 minutes away from the Ogilvy Good Zoo. So zoo sci students at West Lib start working with animals actual hands-on animal care, even during a pandemic, um, their ver very first semester on campus. Um, gonna kind of jump forward, but we are NCAA Division II athletics as well. And we'll talk about those scholarship opportunities moving forward. Um, just to give you an idea of where we're located, we are kind of opposite of Marshall. So we are in the top of the state, about one hour from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about two hours away from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, so you can really see that a lot of Ohio residents actually live closer to our campus than some West Virginia residents. And for that reason, um, because of our tri-state location, we do offer a metro rate for um, neighboring counties in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. The application process is very straightforward. There's no fee, there's no deadline. So seniors, you still have plenty of time to get through the registration process. We did go test optional this year. So ACT, SAT scores are not required for admission. They are still currently required for scholarships and for direct admit programs into health sciences. So here's a quick glance at our merit-based scholarships. There's no additional application, no uh, essay required. When you apply for admission, you automatically apply for scholarships. So basically after high school graduation, if you have that cumulative GPA and you have one of those test scores, you automatically get that scholarship renewable for up to four years. So they range obviously from $1,000 annually to an entirely full ride scholarship for all four years. Um, so we do have athletic scholarships, part of Division II Athletics. If you're not familiar with West Lib, basketball is a big deal. Men's wrestling is a big deal. Um, acrobatics and tumbling for women is a huge deal. So if you're interested in those opportunities, I'll be happy to put you in contact with our coaches. Artistic scholarships exist as well. Um, so based on an audition or a portfolio review, for example, every member of West Liberty's marching band is on a scholarship. And then of course, we just kind of talked about academic based awards. So our campus is open for visits, very limited. So basically Monday through Friday, um, we have three time slots per day, one family per tour. We also just launched a brand new virtual tour that's directly on our homepage. And then we're hosting a number of virtual events as well. Um, but thanks so much for your time. And I look forward to talking to you about West Liberty University. Thank you very much, West Liberty. Uh, moving on to our next panelist this evening, we have West Virginia University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jody Kilpatrick, and I'm the WVU Ohio Regional Recruiter. I'm going to pass, um, pass it off to my friend Bryson to tell you a little bit about uh, his experience at West Virginia University and show you around our campus. Uh, before I do that, though, I do want to tell you about a special program at West Virginia University called the Ohio Reciprocity Agreement. With this agreement, Ohio students uh, get in-state tuition with 40 of our majors. So I'm happy to answer any questions about that um, at the end of our, our program today. Without further ado, here's Bryson. Oh, hey, Bryson. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm good, what's up with you? Oh, nothing, I just got a Starbucks from our Barnes & Noble Cafe on campus. Looks good. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, would you care if I just followed you around a little bit today asking about opportunities and things going on on campus for incoming students? Yeah, absolutely, go ahead and follow me. So before we start, I just need to know a little bit more about you. Who are you? Uh, what did you study? What do you like about the university? All that good stuff. Absolutely. So uh, my name's Bryson. I actually just graduated from the university this past December <laughs> with a degree in political science. And I also studied journalism and PR while I was here as well. Um, and so I'm actually from the big city of Chapmanville, West Virginia which is just three and a half hours south of the city of Morgantown where we're currently at. Um, and so I grew up my whole life living in West Virginia. So I knew a lot about the university itself, so much so I actually ended up becoming a tour guide and that's what I do now. 
That's awesome. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. No problem. So can you tell us uh, where we're headed right now? Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually headed into our mountain layer, which is like a student union here at WVU. So um, basically what a student union is, is it's kind of like the living room of the university. Uh, students will actually head inside of here, hang out, socialize a little bit, but also grab themselves a bite to eat. So it's a really social place for students to get to know one another as well as the university they're studying at. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, so, absolutely. Like, what things are offered to students specifically in the mountain layer? Like what events are hosted? Yeah, so we actually have a bowling alley in here as well as a theater that'll put on different theatrical performances for our students. Um, but we also have events like WVU Up All Night and others, which you can actually learn about uh, in some events we're hosting here in the near future, um, WVU Open Houses. Um, so essentially that's where prospective students can log online and see basically what it's like in the day of a mountaineer. So anywhere from classes and academics to social life and making friends on campus. You can learn it all and you can find that at www.wvu.edu slash events. That sounds awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a great time. You should definitely check it out. So where are we headed to now? Uh, we're actually headed to grab myself a bite to eat at probably a few of our eateries here uh, in the mountain layer. Uh, we have a few different ones like Jasmine's, which is like a coffee shop. We also have a Witch Witch and a Chick-fil-A as well as others uh, for students to kind of eat at during their day. So you have a lot of options for food. Oh, we have tons of options. A few moments later. Oh wow, looks like you got a pretty good breakfast. Yeah, I did actually. I got uh, a chicken biscuit from uh, Chick-fil-A. I also got a breakfast sandwich from Witch Witch and I got a gyro from Tzatziki's. Oh wow, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, I just got a little bit hungry throughout the duration of my day, so I got a little snack. Okay, great, great. Yeah. So I have to ask Bryson, yeah. what is this building right here in the center? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so. That is actually going to be one of our first buildings we built on campus back okay. in 1867. So that's Woodburn Hall. Woodburn Hall, one of the most photographed buildings in the state of West Virginia. Almost heaven, West Virginia. And it's also featured on Tour Guide Lives. You might be asking, well, what's a Tour Guide Live? That's a great question. So essentially, it's like a virtual campus tour given by our tour guides. You'll be able to see Woodburn Hall as well as the inside of it and the different academics that are hosted inside of that building as well as the others around our downtown campus. And, I mean, if you want to sign up for uh, Tour Guide Live itself, you can go to that same link that I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, to learn more, okay? Okay, I'm definitely going to be signing up. Absolutely. So since we had to make a stop at the library, I was just wondering, could I ask you some book smart questions? Yeah, of course. Okay, so first of all, what really helped you succeed as a student at WVU? Yeah, well, the first thing that comes to mind is a resource called uh, Office Hours, which professors get to sit in their office for three hours a week, not working on anything, but waiting for you to come in and ask them questions. Oh, that's so cool. So. Did you really feel supported by your professors? Did you feel like you could just go in their office and ask them anything? Yeah, I did, and that's a great way to kind of make uh, connections around campus that'll propel you into your professional journey afterwards. Okay, cool, cool. So for students that are just looking into the university, wondering a little bit more about what it's like, things like that, are there ways for them to get their questions answered? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of like that link I told you to go to earlier, uh, you can actually go to that here in the next few months. We're hosting a series of events called Ask Us Anything, where you'll be able to go online and ask our mountaineers anything from student life to academics. Okay. So Bryson, this place is really cool. Where exactly are we? Yeah, so we're actually at our Student Recreation Center. Uh, this is a place where students can come after class or even after studying at the library all day and kind of relax and uh, work out. So do you like running? I actually love running. As we speak, I'm preparing to run a marathon. And speaking of preparing, as you were talking about prospective students earlier, I encourage all my prospective students to prepare for college and life in Morgantown by reaching out to your regional recruiters, and you can find those at admissions.wvu.edu slash admissions-counselors. Are you okay? Oh, I'm just fine. Don't worry about me. I'm just preparing for a marathon. Country roads, take me home.
Thank you very much, West Virginia University. Um, as we move into the second half of our presentations, just a reminder that uh, attendees are welcome to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. But up next this evening will be Fairmont State University. Hi guys, how are you all tonight? Um, my name's Teresa. I am the admission counselor that works with all of the Ohio students. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk with you all this evening, tell you a little bit more about Fairmont State. So if you're not sure exactly where Fairmont State University is located, we are about um, three, three and a half hours from Columbus, Ohio. And we are also about the same distance from Cleveland, Ohio to give you a little perspective of where we're located. You can see us located there on the map with the Falcon Head. We're about 20 minutes south of Morgantown, West Virginia, as you guys just saw with uh, Jody from WVU. So we're about 20 minutes from their campus. Um, we are surrounded by a lot of trees. We're known as the College on the Hill. So once you come onto our Hilltop campus, you're surrounded by about 120 acres of our campus. And um, we have five different residence halls, which I'll kind of touch base on here in a few moments. But there is a lot of outdoor activities to do here in Fairmont, West Virginia. This picture here is of our Falcon Center. I like to call it the heart of our university. Anytime that you have any activities going on here at campus, they're always going to be taking place in our Falcon Center. Also in our Falcon Center, you'll find the home of our fitness center, our seven lane lap pool. There's a hot tub and a sauna also in the pool area. There's two basketball courts. We have a Chick-fil-A, which is actually the only Chick-fil-A here in Fairmont. We also have a place called Chilaka, which a lot of students will know that by either Moe's or Chipotle or Quadova because it's set up a lot like that style. So it's a Mexican grill. We also have our full service Starbucks leading into our bookstore in the Falcon Center. You can also find our dining hall on the third floor of our Falcon Center. And it's, a, it's set up like an all you can eat buffet. They have everything from salad bars to grills to Italian foods, anything you can pretty much think of, they offer there. And if you don't find it there, let them know and they will see about getting it on their menu. So it makes it really nice for our students. We do offer over 100 different programs of study. Over 80 of those are just for bachelor's degrees. So you're sure to be able to find a degree here that you love. We do have some programs that you might not be able to find anywhere else in the state of West Virginia. Some of those include our national security and intelligence, our community health education program, architecture, and then we also have our FAA Part 141 flight school. If you're unsure about your major, that's completely fine. Um, I know when I started at Fairmont State, I wasn't quite sure, but now we have something called our academic pathways. The academic pathway actually allows you to study in an area that you have interest while not losing that year of school while you're entering as an undecided student. So you're still gonna be studying towards that end goal of what you would like to pursue, but you're still exploring different options. And if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to help you with that pathway. Also, our students are able to be very successful because of a lot of the resources we have in our accessibility department, as well as in our tutoring services and testing services center. All of these opportunities are free for our students. So we want you to take advantage of those opportunities. We are in the NCAA Division II sports. We have 17 men's and women's sports. Um, because of COVID, they're all kind of kicking off right now. So be sure to tune in and you, we're live streaming all of our athletic events. We also do have over 50 different clubs and organizations. And if there's a club or organization that you don't find on our campus, it's really easy to kickstart that club or organization and leave your mark on our campus. So if that's something you would like help with, I can help you get set up with our student orgs coordinator and help you get a club or organization started with your friends on our campus. I can also talk to you guys more about clubs and organizations if you guys would like. So when it comes to cost and the value and then some scholarships for you, 
we do have a pretty amazing tuition rates. Um, also for our surrounding states, we do have our Metro rate. And we have just actually released a Metro scholarship as well. We do offer one of the lowest tuition rates in our region. And we do also offer plenty of financial aid. To be honest, we just kickstarted last week our SOAR scholarships, which is a virtual event that all you have to do is sign up and attend one virtual event and you automatically get a $500 scholarship that is renewable every year for four years. So in essence, it's a $2,000 scholarship. You can sign up for those still. We do have about eight more events going on and I can get you a quick link if you would like for that opportunity. When you look at our tuition and fees, this is showing what our current students from Ohio would pay. So you see that on a state cost, and then you see that metro discount of $5,207. So that brings that tuition and fees down to $11,607 per year, every year for four years. Um, and then add in there your room and meal plan, and that brings your tuition and cost um, for attendance right around $20,000. Now, like I said, we do offer a Metro rate scholarship. So you'll see here on the top portion, it tells you a little bit about those estimated costs. And then at the bottom, it says the criteria of that Metro scholarship. So you must have a 3.5 GPA, a 24 ACT or an 1160 SAT. Um, right here is my contact information. Um, feel free to contact me at any time. Right now, all you need for admission is a 2.0 GPA, and we are test optional for fall 2021. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Fairmont State. Um, up next this evening is Wheeling University. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mary Myman. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Wheeling University. I know my screen says Byron, but I am stepping in in his place this evening. Um, here at Wheeling, we are in Wheeling, West Virginia, similar to uh, West Lib, who you heard from earlier. Um, we are about an hour away from Pittsburgh. So quick little snapshot about us here on campus. Um, we are a very, very diverse campus. Students come from 15 countries and 33 states. So don't be afraid that you'll be the only one from Ohio. Most of our students actually do come from Ohio. So you will feel right at home here. Our average class size is about 15 students and we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. That means that you're really gonna be one-on-one -on -one with your professors right from day one. Um, as you move on in your major, depending upon what you study, it's not uncommon to have classes of 10 or fewer. So in addition to getting to know your professors, you're going to get to know your classmates and move with them through your classes and make really great friends throughout those pro that process as well. And our little bit of bragging here, we were just recently named the best regional university in West Virginia by the 2021 US News and World Report college ranking. So we are pretty proud about that. Uh, as I mentioned, being a smaller campus, our students have every chance to step in and grow right away. Um, if you want to get involved in campus ministry, if you want to get involved in athletics, different majors, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to make connections and to not only be a part of different clubs and activities, but to be a leader as well. Um, you know, if there's a club that we don't have on campus that you want to see, you can start it up. That's how our tennis club got started. When I was a student at Wheeling, that's how our acapella club got started. So it's always easy to kind of get involved and make those connections, um, particularly if you're looking for internships or you know shadowing experiences. Our faculty members are very connected in the community. So by making those connections with your faculty members, they'll be able to put you in contact with others in your field as well. Here on campus, as I have kind of mentioned, um, there is a lot going on. So we are Division II Athletics um, in the same conference as many of my colleagues here this evening. Um, so all of our athletic events are free for our students to go to. So definitely go support your fellow Cardinals. Um, most of our majors have clubs associated with them. So just because you're a nursing major doesn't mean you can't join the psychology club. You know, the business majors can be in the Criminal Justice Association. Um, so again, it's very easy to kind of get involved. And every once in a while, again, 
pandemic notwithstanding, we do get to take some club trips, which is really exciting. These are just a few of the clubs, some of which I did mention earlier. Um, they have lots of activities throughout the year. And at the beginning of the fall semester, we do have what's called the activities fair, where all of the clubs represented um, have a booth and students get a chance to just walk around and sign up for clubs and events and meet with students to figure out where their interests are. And then here are some of our, again, our Division II athletic teams. Um, we do offer scholarships for our athletes. Not all athletes are on scholarship, so that's a conversation you have with the coaches. Um, but we do have um, the ability here to offer extra aid to students, which is nice. One unique thing about us is that we do have a fantastic rugby team. Um, rugby is not a Division II sport or an NCAA sport, excuse me, um, but we are in um, class Division 1A for our rugby team, which is exciting. Our core curriculum is one of our highlights here as well. So regardless of your major of study, every student will complete a core curriculum, which consists of, you know, math, science, history, public speaking, ethics, psychology, things like that. Um, these really help develop you into a much more well-rounded person because um, you're going to be an expert in your field, but you also need to be able to write well and speak well and work well with others. Um, and the core really helps develop that. It is also great for students who are a little unsure of what they want to do. So if you come in as undecided, um, you will not be behind by taking, you know, just semesters of core classes your first year or so, because these are required for graduation. Plus, it actually helps you kind of get your feet wet and figure out where your interests do lie and what you would want to major in. And then here's a breakdown of our education program, excuse me, our academic majors. Um, you know, we do a lot with um, business and nursing. Those are two of our most popular programs. Um, exercise science is popular as well because you do act in a student training role and get to work with our athletic teams. Um, you know, we also offer different professional certificates, as you see there, which are really cool because they give you a way to kind of boost your skills in different areas. We have a student ambassador here in our office who is an engineering science major and picking up a construction management certificate because that's kind of where he sees himself going after graduation. All of our graduate programs are online as well, and we do have a doctorate of physical therapy. For admissions and financial aid, we are rolling admission, which means we have no deadlines to speak of. Students can apply and be accepted and commit at any point in time. Um, we have a free online application and we are on the Common App as well. Um, we are currently test blind for the class of 2021, which means that you are not required to submit any test scores. If you do submit them, we will not take them into consideration for admissions or scholarships. If you have them and you want to send them in, by all means do so, but they are not required. Um, any of our students in Ohio who are taking any um, dual enrollment classes, we can take those in as well. If you have CCP credits, um, we are more than able to take those in after you graduate and finish those classes. If you are looking to visit, um, we are doing individual campus visits uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., and they are limited to one family per time slot for social distancing, so definitely sign up on our website. Every single student who's accepted to Wheeling receives an academic scholarship. They currently range from 8,000 to 16,000 a year for all four years based off your GPA. Um, and for students who live in, I'm sorry, Belmont, Jefferson, Harrison, and Monroe counties, I had to check my list there, um, we do offer a reduced tuition rate as well. And then other scholarship breakdowns, again, you see we have the athletics mentioned there. Please contact your coach if you're interested. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us in the admissions office. We're more than happy to work with you and your family to help you make the best decision. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Wheeling. And now we're going to move on to our final presenter for the evening, Concord University. I guess it would help if I was unmuted. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. My name is Amy Walker. I'm an admissions counselor that covers the Buckeye State. And um, I just wanted to welcome you guys for this um, presentation. And I'll be the one um, working with all of you guys. So without further ado, 
Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, we are located in Athens, West Virginia, um, right where our paw print is. We started out in 1872 um, as a education school, which is still one of our most popular programs in addition to pre-med as well as social work in business. Um, we have four graduate programs to our education, two are for education, master's in social work, health promotion, and we just add added our fifth, um, which is master's in athletic training. Um, so Athens is probably about like 20 minutes from Princeton, um, not too far away from the Virginia. We also like to um, point out that we offer over 21 million in financial aid, and we're also 49th in the nation for the top um, 250 public schools um, offering the most financial aid per student. Um, our admissions requirements, like everyone else, um, since we are a state school, we are um, starting at uh, just test optional and we are 2.0. However, I highly recommend that you send in your transcripts so we can send, I mean, your test scores. So, um, we can consider them for scholarships um, as well as some class placement. Um, if you start at a 3.0 and do not have a test score, you will get some sm small scholarship amount. Um, so with our faculty, we like to um, emphasize that 73% hold the highest degree in their discipline. Um, our small average class size runs about 25. The more advanced your classes become, the smaller they get, the more intimate they are. Student faculty ratio is 14 to one. All professors um, teach classes. We have GAs, but they will not teach a class. Um, and your student, if all students will be advised by um, someone in their area. If for some reason you change your degree, then we'll also change your advisor. So um, we like to highlight our performing arts, which is also some scholarship opportunities, um, a variety of bands, um, all kind of depends upon with COVID um, for our marching band, as well as our vocal ensembles. They offer scholarship money in addition to our theater. We also have a campus TV and radio station. Um, even if broadcasting isn't part of your major, you can still be part of these programs if that's something you have a passion for. Um, and we have many other student activities. This is just a small snippet. Um, so we have about a comprehensive list of about 70. Um, so faith-based group, political group, um, community service group, like our Bonner Scholars, we have that. Um, if there's something that uh, you have an interest for, but it doesn't exist, it's really easy to get in touch with our student government and we can get you the funding as well as support to start up that group. Um, so for those of you who might know, not know where we are, we're nestled in the mountains in southern West Virginia, um, where there's lots of activity to do outside. Um, so right now, a lot of our students are at Winter Place, which is about 35 minutes away from campus. Um, and then we also have Pipestem State Park, which is about 10 minutes down the road where you can do golfing, um, hiking, as well as if you're interested in fishing, we have an outdoors club that will go off and do that. Um, we're near a lot of outlets to the Appalachian Trail, um, as well as whitewater rafting and mountain and biking. So just like uh, my colleagues on here, I'm also in Division II in the Mountain East Conference. Um, here's if you want to take a snapshot. Um, if you're interested in any of our sports, you can go to cumountainlions.com. Also, we are um, in NACE Division for eSports. So if you're interested in League of Legends, Overwatch, Call of Duty, Valorant, or Smash, um, you can get a potential uh, scholarship money and compete with us. Our Call of Duty uh, team has been doing awesome nationally. Um, and so residence life, we have approximately 700 students who are on campus. Um, overall, our population is a little under 1900 from um, about 30 states and 34 different countries. Um, we have traditional style dorms as well as suite style dorms. Um, all students can have a vehicle on campus. It's just $25 a semester. So um, dining options, of course, we have a camp cafeteria, um, but we also have Subway, um, Starbucks, and Wingspan, which I kind of like to compare to a mini Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, this is just kind of an idea of our meal plans. If um, you like more flex dollars instead of cafeteria meals, you can always change that every semester. Public safety, as I'm sure all these other schools um, say, is the most important thing because we want you to be a safe and a learning environment. Um, all of our police, um, all of our policemen are trained with the state. So it's not just a security guard. We have uh, police that work within the community. The town of Athens in itself is a little bit smaller than Concord University. So they work really well with the community, making sure um, getting to know um, everybody. And so this is a candid photo, I think. Um, I'm an alum and so this is our chief. Um, he's really great to get to know everyone. 
Um, so scholarships, as I mentioned, um, so th earlier 3.0, you can get a minimum scholarship. The next level is at a 960 on the SAT or an 18 on the ACT. You just send those into me. We have a variety of other scholarships as well um, with our um, foundations. And then out of state, if you are a county that borders the state of West Virginia, if your parent or legal guardian is a teacher, or if you're interested in some of our most popular programs, we have a separate list for that. Then you also qualify for tuition reduction. Um, and I encourage you guys to follow us. And um, also we are having visits on campus. They're very strict with um, uh, making sure that we're in the state's guidelines um, due to COVID, um, but feel free to go to concord.edu slash visit for our visit opportunities, as well as um, just any other information that we have going on. Um, and then I, my information's at the bottom left. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Concord. Uh, we do have about five minutes left. Uh, so why don't we go around very quickly and have you share a little bit more information with our attendees and those who'll be watching uh, this recorded video later. Uh, perhaps you could answer uh, one of the following two questions, either what's your favorite event or tradition on campus, or maybe what's one piece of advice you have for students going through the college search process. And we'll go back in the same order. So let's start with Marshall. Hello, I'm back again. Um, I, uh, to kind of answer the first question of what was my favorite thing about being a student at Marshall, um, overall the atmosphere. We're considered a mid-sized university, so we have between 12,000 to 14,000 total students that attend Marshall University, but our student to faculty ratio is 19 students to one faculty member. So your average class size is usually only between 20 to 25 students. So you really get that personalized education that you deserve and you get to form really great relationships with your professors um, in just this absolutely incredibly welcoming and wonderful family-like atmosphere. And it also doesn't hurt that we're D1 in athletics and all tickets to all home sporting events are free. Um, so that would, those two things, probably my favorite things about being a student. Great, thank you. Uh, Wes Liberty? So the obvious answer for me to give is that my favorite time on campus as a student and now as alum and an employee is homecoming because that is when folks come back to campus. Um, West Liberty was established in 1837, so almost 30 years before West Virginia was its own state. So it's really fascinating to kind of see where that legacy um, has continues to go. Um, during homecoming, the Greek organizations host these, uh, this event called serenades. And in college, there is a line of um, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And all I can say is that students jump right over that line, um, but it's in all fun and it's, it's just a blast um, for students and employees alike. Okay, thank you. Uh, West Virginia University? I'm gonna keep with traditions and I'm going to go with um, singing country roads at the end of all the sporting events. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> That's the best. And since we're all uh, West Virginia schools, I know that and many of you are probably from the state of West Virginia. So um, you may, <laughs> um, even though you might uh, you know, not, not root for West Virginia Mountaineers, you probably have some sort of affinity with that song. So, <laughs> and I'm from Ohio, so, and I still do. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, Fairmont State? Um, I would have to say mine is our Victory Bell. Um, I was an alum, I'm an alum from Fairmont State. The Victory Bell used to be rang after every victory of a football game. And then it was actually relocated to the middle of our campus. And now all of our student organizations have the opportunity to pick the bell. So being a member of Greek life throughout college, it was always like a great thing when you got to paint the bell and it was your organization's turn. So that would be my favorite tradition. Great, thank you. Uh, Fairmont? Oh, 
sorry, uh, Fairmont. Oh, I think I'm my, next. <laughs> yeah, you are. Sorry. Um, so I'm wheeling. That's okay. Um, I, I'm actually going to answer the piece of advice question. Uh, my best piece of advice would be to know what you don't want. You know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, know what you want to do, you know, figure out what you want to study, where you want to go, size of campus, things like that. Um, as somebody who didn't know any of that when she was going through the college search process, um, my suggestion is to go from process of elimination. Um, if you know that you don't want to be too far away from home, don't look at schools too far away from home. If you know that you really hate math, stay away from science -y and math type programs that will involve a lot of math classes. Um, so my my best advice is to to know what you don't want and start from there if you're a little unsure. Great, thank you. And Concord. Um, so I'm going to go with the tradition. We have, um, it's tied in with Concord, but it's called the Athens Town Social, and most of it is located on our campus. Um, and so we have all kinds of local vendors and um, arts and crafts sort of thing going on, and it's like the weekend before classes or right whenever students move in. Um, so it's also a little thing where um, families can spend time, especially our out-of-state families. They'll uh, spend the weekend kind of like their last little moments with their babies, and <laughs> then um, kind of like a send-off. Um, and even some, I'm an alum, some of us have used it as kind of like a little class get together or anyone from a previous organization will be like, hey, come on down to the town social. So it's a nice little thing um, to just get together. Okay, thank you, Concord. And thank you to all of our panelists this evening for your great presentations. And thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. Uh, before we end this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. The first is that when you close your window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask you to take a minute and complete. And there is one more block of sessions this evening. So please feel free to sign up for those. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again and good luck in your college search. <laughs>